first of all, I want to thank Annette from AK's Genealogy Research Blog for bringing this to my attention. So, what is this? Well, you may think this is just a plain, even, you know, not the most beautiful looking web page. But to me, this is perfect. Because this is Family Search's experimental new OCR search of old deed and will records. Yes, you can finally search those old unindexed wills and deeds. The handwriting, you can search the handwriting. It is beyond unbelievable. I'm so excited. All right, so we've all been there. We've all, you know, scrolled through those old documents looking for names. Some of them have atrocious handwriting. Sometimes, you know, your eyes cross. You may miss mentions of your ancestors or their fan club. But look, now FamilySearch has released this new experimental option for searching those records using OCR. Now, if you've used something before like newspapers.com, you've already used OCR. So you'll know that it may not always, well, well, you know, we're going to get to the caveats in a minute. First, let's just uh, take this baby for a spin, see what it can do. So when I first found out about this yesterday, yes, yesterday, I'm so excited. I had to immediately make a video. Um, I knew immediately what I wanted to look for. I've been stuck on the same mystery for a long time. I'm trying to figure out who are the parents of my George W. West. There is a candidate and they are a good candidate, but I've just never been able to actually tie my George W. West to his father and mother candidates. And one thing that would really help me is to know who he bought his land from in Forsyth County, Georgia in 1852 or 1853. Because that would just hopefully give me some clues. Who did he move from Union County, South Carolina to Forsyth, Car Forsyth County, Georgia with? Uh, maybe, you know, there's some family that was already there that he bought his land from. And this has just been a huge mystery. I have been unable to find where he actually bought his land. Now, I know he had land in 1853 because he was taxed on it. I know he moved there in 1852 or 1853. So I have been looking through these old deeds. They're not indexed, of course. I was even going page by page through the old deeds, and I have just been unable to find them. I even checked probate. Maybe he inherited this land from somebody, which would have been you know, awesome for trying to prove his parentage. But no, nothing. I haven't found anything yet. So the very first thing I wanted to try on this new experimental search was to find George W. West where he bought his land in 1852 or 1853 in Forsyth County, Georgia. Now, Family Search, luckily, if you want to search for a specific person, it gives you some search help where you can do that. But for me, I decided just to search West. Now, you know where this is going. It's going to take a minute and it's going to find, I don't know, 900 million Wests. I'm, 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 hopefully I'm, I'm wrong. Um, I did the search last night and here we go. Okay. Oh yeah, no, 38 million. Okay. A little less than 900 million. Um, now am I just going to start looking through all these Wests? Well, no, of course not. I am going to filter a little bit. So you can filter by state. Oh, so you can filter by county. Uh, you can filter by type of record. You can filter by year. And, but as you can see, I'm going to filter by state first. It is Georgia. And then I'm going to filter by county, which is Forsyth. You'll probably need to click more on both. And it's handy. It tells you how many records are in each state and county. There we go. Forsyth, 1,733. Now, I actually went through all 1,733 of these last night. But I'll tell you how I did it. I didn't look at 1,733 records. Um, so what I did was once I got here, scroll all the way back up, and you can see what will what Family Search does that is so handy is it'll tell you the people in the record. Now, West, of course, is a direction. So, and Landies, people are going to talk about the West a lot, to the to the west of the river, to the west of so-and-so's land. So, it tells you people, and that way you can sort of pare down who you are looking for. Now, of course, if there's more than five people in the deed, it's not going to show everybody. So, take that with a grain of salt. So what I ended up doing now, and what I'm what I'm doing right now, it may filter people out, and you got to be careful about filtering out your good matches. But I just control F, and then look for Wests, and so that's what I did. So there, it shows there are ten West entries um, on this page. So I just, and you know, five of them are right here in this in this uh, document. Now I had actually come across this document before in my page by page reading, but I went ahead and I noted this on my research log, and kept looking. So I went down. 
Oh, there's some more Charles C. West. Charles West. And this one, actually, I had never noted before. Um, Charles West, it turns out he didn't even live in Forsyth County. He was a sort of absentee landowner. I think he was buying land from somebody who had won the land in the land lottery. But still, like, I was able to find a new West that I had never found before. So this was immediately gold. I was so excited. Okay, so I found this record. It looks promising. Charles West. I've never heard of this guy before. Who is Charles West? In Forsyth County. I thought I knew every West in Forsyth County at this point. I have been researching this family forever. Well, you can do a couple of things. First of all, you can, of course, open, click this or click here, and it will take you to the page of the deed book on Family Search. Another thing you can do before you do that, view the full transcript of the text. So you can sort of read what's going on on that page. Now, as you can see, it sort of starts in the middle. So we're going to want to go to the actual deed book on Family Search. We'll use the Family Search catalog search, which I have a video about that, which I will put up in the description of this video. But yeah, you want to go to Family Search and look at this actual document because you want to go want. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. You're going to want to go to the page before to see how this uh, this record starts, and you're probably going to want to look a couple of pages before and after anyway, because you always want to see if there are other related records, especially near a deed record. A lot of times people kind of went to the courthouse and did all their deed business at once. So there might be a few things going on. So yeah, you can look at the full transcript of the text and close that, or you can just right click and choose open link in new tab and open that up and then you can look at it. And the very cool thing about this too, is that it will highlight in red the words so see all of these, it looks like West, 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 West. Now, of course, I need to scroll in here to make sure it really is West. And yeah, it is Charles M. West. So look, here's a whole new record for me to look at. And if I'd been very lucky, this would have been the record that I solved the mystery and helped me find where my George West bought his land. And one more thing, be creative. Now, it says keyword. It doesn't say last name. So you can search up other things. In Georgia, we're really lucky that most of our land was given away by a land lottery, especially here in North Georgia. All our land has a section number, a district number, and a land lot number, and those have never changed. The same land lot that I live on now was drawn by a fortunate drawer in the land lottery back in 1832. And that land lot number has stayed the same, section, district, and land lot. So I know the land lots that George W. West owned. And what I can do is I can just search for, say, 301, the number of one of the land lots that he owned. Now, of course, I'm going to need the section and district number, but, you know, this keyword search, I don't want to overload it too much. Then I can, again, just go to Georgia and then back down to Forsyth County. There we go. There's 53 entries for that 301. And here we go. And I've actually already kind of looked through this. And this one right here is a land transaction on a lot of land I know my ancestor later owned. And I'm seeing the people that bought and sold it back in 1852 before he would have lived in the county. So that's gold right there. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm now searching my ancestor, all of his many land lots to see if I can find where he actually purchased the land or maybe where he got that land in a probate that I'm just not finding yet or or he you know he went to did his business in a different county and that's why I'm not finding it in Forsyth County so really the sky is the limit with this I'm so so excited about this new feature and I really hope Family Search you know adopts it now of course there are caveats uh, there's always caveats this is an experimental feature it's not meant to replace your critical thinking and going through records when you think you need to go through them page by page or check indexes, for example. And here are a few things I just want you to consider when using this feature. First, like I said before, be careful with those filters. You could filter out your good matches. You know, for example, maybe my ancestor did go to town in another county and that's where this land is registered. So just by looking at Forsyth County, maybe I have filtered out my good matches. So I'm not saying don't filter because otherwise you may be searching through you know, hundreds of thousands of records, but maybe you know try your search with different filters. Second, remember this is OCR. It is not going to catch every instance of your ancestor's name or other thing that you're looking for just because it is OCR. It's still a computer. It's still AI. Pull up the actual record. Basically, if you look at the URL whenever you open one of these pages on 
in this search, you'll see that it points you to just one single page in the family search record. What you'll want to do is go to the family search catalog and open up that actual deed book or will book because of course you want to go a couple pages forward, a couple pages back. You want to see what's really going on in context there. Also consider breaking long words into parts. So I noticed in my West search, I came up with a lot of um, entries for a family who also lived in the county named West Brooks. So West was catching the West Brooks. So maybe if you have a compound word or a long name like Butterworth, you may consider just searching Butter or Worth to catch up anything that the OCR may have broken up. And last but not least, note your findings in your research log. If I had gone through 1,700 entries and just kind of browsed at them and not written down what I had found, I would have to go through those 1,700 entries again later. So just save yourself some time and make sure you note everything down in your research log. I use an Airtable research log created by Nicole Dyer of Family Locket, and I'll link to that in the description of this video so you can use it too. I find it just really, really helpful. All right, guys. Well, you know, in case you couldn't tell, I'm super excited about this feature. I know I'm going to lose a lot of hours playing with this in the days and weeks and months to come. Uh, I would love to hear about your experience with it. Have you broken any brick walls? Have you found anything interesting? Please let me know in the comments. And if you would be so kind, please like and subscribe to my channel. Every like, every subscribe really, really helps. Thank you so much.